Oof. Let me brighten this up a little bit. Good evening, everyone. Before I begin, I want to get two points out of the way. First, thank you all for taking the time to come out here and address and listen to our stories. I truly appreciate the amount of support and attention that this important circumstance is, is receiving. Second thing I want to make clear is that Elon Musk is definitely a relative of mine. Okay, David? Leave me alone. All right, let's jump right into it then. As some of you may know, my name is Saul Rascón Salazar. I am a dreamer. I came to the United States with my family in August of 2006 when I was five years old, and this is where figuratively my life began. My parents enrolled me in a Catholic school named St. Matthew's, and I attended kindergarten through eighth grade there. I've only been to two schools in my life, Brophy and St. Matthew's. These two places have shaped me who I am as a person. In elementary and middle school, my legal status didn't really affect me. In fact, I didn't really know I was undocumented. I didn't let my status get in the way of the things that I wanted to accomplish, like become student council president, get a 4.0, or growing so close to my teachers to the point where my parents invited them to my surprise party along with all my other friends. Yes, that happened. <laughs> my friend, teacher, and now principal of St. Matthew, Mr. Guerra, yelled, surprise, as I walked into my own house on my birthday. <laughs> Thank you for that. Just to give you guys some reference, DACA was passed in 2012. And in 2012, I was in sixth grade going into seventh grade. I had no idea what DACA was. In fact, I wasn't really informed about politics, which I'm sure is a good thing for a sixth grader. I had no idea that every goodbye I said to my best friends met, meant that maybe I wasn't going to see them the next day. Let's fast forward to my beautiful experiences here at Brophy, where all these new opportunities were presented to me. These opportunities included trips to Guatemala, El Salvador, Peru, and maybe Argentina. Going to all these fascinating places actually seemed possible before they were impossible. I could actually go on these trips. Then reality hit me and I couldn't hit it back. All of those doors were slammed in my face. Even with my DACA status, I still don't have permission to leave the country. DACA only protects me from not getting deported which just isn't enough for me and the thousands and almost millions of teenagers just like me. Well, let me make this clear. I can leave the country. As my father says, you can go anywhere. I can book you a trip to Europe or Dubai or wherever you want. You just can't come back. Sure, it's a funny joke until you're the subject. I received my DACA status around this time last year. I had applied in October of 2016 and received it three months later. Which for those of you who don't know is a really fast time because usually the process takes about seven to ten months. I was so excited when my DACA envelope came in and so were my parents. With this piece of plastic, everything began to drift in such a bright direction. Applying for a summer job and driving a car both became feasible. That very same summer after receiving my DACA, I was accepted slash hired into the U-Haul paid internship program that is offered by Brophy. Out of the four interns that were chosen, I was the only junior. The rest were seniors. This made me feel proud of myself because I felt like I was putting my piece of plastic to great use. Other benefits that I began to experience were those of safety and assurance. I felt safe and comfortable enough to fly on an airplane without carrying paranoia with me. So. I took a trip to Camden, New Jersey, and Philadelphia with Brophy. As these privileges that easily go unnoticed by the majority of my friends continued to show up at my door, I felt more and more like a member of the society that I am in love with. As Nelson mentioned, I began to go on walks of joy. Walks of joy. Just as I was beginning to have the time of my life with these privileges that I was so grateful for, the US government decided to snatch the joy from mine and thousands of others' hands. He returned us, us dreamers, the fear of deportation. And for many, those fears became a reality. On the week right before our finals, like Yael mentioned, Yael, Leo, and I took a trip to the nation's headquarters, Washington, DC. During our trip in DC, we woke up every morning and went, ventured out into the hill to speak to those who have our lives in their hands, politicians. We dropped into their offices, walked with them to and from their office 
to their meetings, waited for them to leave the capital, etc., etc. We did everything possible to, do, to find out what the heck was up with the government's way of dealing with DACA and the DREAM Act. After the first couple of days, we got the hang of how things rolled in Capitol Hill. We really got a feel for how politicians, whether they were senators or representatives, reacted to our physical presence and their sense of urgency towards a DREAM Act. Some politicians wanted to truly help and they expressed that they were trying, while some politicians said that, they should, that we should stay away from them because they were talking to us more than they would like to. Yes, a representative of the United States said that to a 16-year-old boy who was asking for a conversation about his future. In our, DC trip with, in our DC trip with Aliento, Arizona, which is back there, we learned a lot about how the gears turn in our government. This knowledge really frustrated me because I learned that some of the meetings and negoti negotiations about my legal status aren't happening between important politicians, literally because one side doesn't want to be the first to swallow their pride and speak up. After tonight, when anyone asks any of you if you know someone who will be personally affected by the decisions made by the US regarding DACA or DREAM Act, you tell them that you know teens like Nelson, Yael, and I that could make a whole lot more of a positive impact in this nation if we were just given permission. My name is Saul Rascon Salazar. I'm currently a DACA recipient, and I encourage all of you to please continue fighting for my presence in this country I call home. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful rest of your evening.